Thanks a lot for the introduction. Hello, I'm Giovanni Camurati. Welcome to this talk about GhostPeak, which is our attack against distance measurement based on ultra wideband ranging. So I would like to talk uh, to thanks all co-authors from ETH Zurich and uh, to you, Darmstadt. First, what can we do with uh, ultra wideband? Well, we have uh, two devices, for example, a phone and a car, and we want to measure the distance between the two. We can do that by looking at the time it takes for a radio packet to travel back and forth, uh, and we know that the packet travels at the speed of light. Because we use ultra wideband, so uh, very short pulses, we can achieve a very high accuracy in time and therefore in distance. Nowadays, the high repetition pulse HRP mode of ultra wideband is deployed in uh, phones, cars, and other objects. Uh, for example, you can open your BMW car simply by keeping your iPhone in your pocket and walking close by. So ultra wideband uh, secure ranging is useful uh, because it can bind distance with identity, and this helps in applications like access control and mobile payments and so on and so forth. And if the user is close, then you can grant access. If the user is far, then you don't grant access. In this scenario, we care about an attacker that is able to trick the two devices to believe that they are close and therefore to have access uh, illegitimately. This is called a distance reduction attack. Ideally, uh, a secure ranging protocol should be provably secure against both logical layer and the physical layer attacks. There are some existing solutions. Some, like those based on signal strength, are trivially insecure because signal strength can be manipulated by an attacker. And some, such as the low repetition pulse mode of uh, ultra wideband, are secure. But I will not talk about this mode because it's really different uh, from the high repetition mode we are focusing now on. So what about HRP? Is it secure? Let's have a look first at the logical layer. So at the logical layer, the two devices share some cryptographic material, and then they use this to generate a new uh, field, uh, the STS, scramble time sequence, at every new ranging operation. And this field is uh, unpredictable in a cryptographically secure way. So the attacker cannot start transmitting in advance in order to shorten the distance. So at the logical layer, HRP is secure. What happens at the physical layer, it's a bit more complex. But let's have a look step by step. So we have a UVB pulse that travels through a channel between the transmitter and the receiver. There is the shortest path, the blue one, the one which represents the distance between them, which is the one we're interested in. But there are also other copies arriving from other paths, like reflections onto objects. And then we don't have one pulse, but we have multiple pulses at a high frequency. And all these copies uh, arrive at the receiver one over the other. This is called interpulse interference. Now, the receiver wants to recover information about that blue path that tells the distance between transmitter and receiver. And it does that by uh, convoluting the transmitted signal, which is known, with the received signal to recover the channel itself. And you can see here that it can see the blue, the yellow, and the green path. Uh, but in this operation, there's also some noise. Uh, this noise is called by the, the interpulse interference. It is caused by some artif artifacts of the mathematical operations involved. So the receiver first estimates the noise floor, then looks for the highest peak, then goes back in time looking for the earliest possible peak. And there it finds the blue path. And uh, since this is the earliest arrival time, it also corresponds to the distance. Now. Uh, in our uh, attack, we try to break this system at the physical layer. So we have an attacker, which is a standard device, cheap, standard, in proximity of one of the uh, devices, in range of one of the devices, actually. And this uh, attacker reactively injects packet on top of the legitimate transmission. This is not something that requires high accuracy. Microsecond accuracy is totally acceptable. And our attacker does have no idea about uh, the cryptographic secrets. So uh, it transmits a different STS, which is randomly different from the legitimate one. Uh, the attacker also 
plays with the power levels of each field in order to maximize is the effect of this uh, wrong STS while not causing jamming. So what happens at the physical layer under attack uh, is that uh, the injected signal uh, raises the noise floor and creates some peaks. One of, one of them might go above the threshold and be recognized as the earliest peak. And this is a ghost peak because it doesn't exist. It doesn't correspond to a real path. Uh, but since it arrives earlier than the earliest one, it causes a distance reduction. This is just a model of what happens. We don't have access to the uh, proprietary implementations inside the devices. We have tested our attack against the Apple U1 chip in many devices like HomePods, iPhone, AirTags, and also when the iPhone is interacting with other uh, proprietary, uh, sorry, other uh, implementations like the NXP or the Corvo ones. We achieved reductions uh, of up to 12 meters with a high success rate. Please check the paper for more details. This is an example of reduction. Uh, two iPhones at, were at 10 meters, and we managed to measure distances down to less than two meters. These are other examples where you can see an NXP tag at uh, zero meters, even if it was at eight. Then in the middle, you can see an air tag appearing close to the iPhone, even if it's far away. And finally, a HomePod starting to play music, even if the iPhone is not close to it enough. So the root problems are that it's fundamentally very hard to distinguish between a legitimate signal, which is arriving with low power, but the right bits in the STS, and a fake signal, which contains a wrong STS at a higher power. And this is worsened by the interpulse interference in HRP. Another problem is that we have, at the same time, performance, that is finding functionality performance, finding the earliest peak, and security, that is validating that this is a real peak, not injected by an attacker. And in addition to this, all the algorithms are proprietary, and they're not defined in the standard and cannot be analyzed. So there is no uh, provable security. Uh, not only in the proprietary implementations, but also in general, there is no, uh, up to now, no formal uh, analysis of uh, the security level of HRP. So we can't say, for example, given the length of this DS, what is the success rate of an attacker. Uh, in the future, uh, we want to mitigate these attacks. There are some possibilities, like trying to increase the thresholds, to add some checks, to test the devices, but all these solutions do not solve the root problems. And there is no way to say how much they make the attack harder in a formal way. So the real solution is to actually work towards a new standard where we decouple the functionality from performance and we achieve a provable security level with an open security design, combining the best of the performance of HRP and the security of the LRP mode. So uh, the takeaway is that we have looked at the devices that use distance measurements to uh, use some security application, for example, access control. We have shown the first practical attack that tricks them to be closer so that we can, for example, get access. We do that by injecting noise on the channel, which uh, generates a fake uh, ghost peak and reduces the distance. Uh, in our threat model, we don't need any cryptographic secret. We just need to be in range of the victims with a standard device. Uh, the root cause is the lack of a formal security analysis and uh, proprietary implementations of HRP. And finally, we have demonstrated our attack on the U1 chip, but we are actively working on this, and we found at least another commercial implementations to be vulnerable. And uh, most importantly, even if there is a pair of devices and one of them is secure, attacking one is enough in order to break the distance measurement for both of them. So this concludes my talk. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'm, I'm here.